So rolling in three, two. Welcome to Tiny Bar Chats. Once again, I'm Edwin Escobar. Mike Moon, what's up, Esco? And today we have a very special guest, um, you know, a lifetime of uh, service uh, to the creative spectrum. Um, without further ado, Mr. No, I'm sorry, Chef Damon Day. How you doing, man? Peace, man. Peace. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for being it's here, a pleasure, man. Pleasure to be here. It's been a journey. Absolutely. Um, and I always, you know, with all my guests, I always uh, dive into uh, the beginning of your journey as as far as back as you want to start. So where does Damon Day, where does Chef Damon Day begin? Wow, that's, wow. Um, honestly, like, it's probably the first time I even considered that. I never even thought. Um, it's, it starts 15 years old. Locked into my bedroom at my parents' crib, just reading. Mm. Tons and tons and tons and tons of books for days and weeks and months. Um, just getting information. I don't even know what I was looking for. Mm. But um, a guy was reading, you know, you know, self-awareness. I was reading about herbology. I was reading about um, nature. I was reading about, you know, health. I was reading about history. I was reading about all type of shit. Um, and I think that's where creativity started. Um, I don't know why I was doing it, honestly. It's just something that just happened. Just uh, acquiring as much knowledge as possible. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. knowing, which, yeah. which is something that I've seen as a trend when you take a chance with anything. Right. You know, yeah, so. That's a good um, thing. Out of all my guests, I know you the longest. Wow. Yeah, and we've shared plenty of things. Right, right. Uh, so we, we're very transparent. Uh, uh, you know, some of my guests are people I look up to from far, and mm -hmm. some of them are my friends. So there's no, <laughs> right. uh, th there's nothing to deny there. Um, so when, uh, so let's go back to music because yeah. that is yeah. uh, one of the first loves, right? right? Absolutely. Uh, how did you go into the music uh, spectrum? Um, you know, I, I don't know why. I don't know why this is happening, but I'm I'm getting early memories right now. Um, listening to Bob Marley. Mm. 13, 14 years old. Um, I think it was the Uprising album. And I think changed my life. Wow. That was a good album. Changed my life. Yeah. And I just was on a search after that. And the music just became one of those things that was helping me through that journey. Um, Bob was influential. Then it became Miles Davis. Then it became Jimi Hendrix. Then it became, um, you know... Isaac Hayes and mm -hmm. Barry White, and it just became house music and mm -hmm. rap, and and then I just began, you know, the exploration of just what sound does to people, right? You know what I mean, um, and we what creativity does to people, and I think that uh, I don't know, man. I just started writing poetry, mm -hmm. poetry, you know. You know, um, started getting put on other people's records. You know, while I'm listening to Brand Newbie and I'm, I'm doing my shit over there. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. So I think, uh, you know, it's just I don't, you know, it's just been a natural progression of just a search for, um, either self knowledge and self expression, in the same kind of sense, and that journey has never stopped for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because, uh, you know, some transitions are very, I guess, from far away, easy to say, like, hey, Chef Damon Day used to make music. And, right. and I think that's like uh, misappropriation. Right. Because it's like, you still do music, maybe not yeah. that often. Yeah, yeah. You, if you sing in the morning before mm -hmm. you get in your car, mm -hmm. which you do, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, or, you know, that you're still making music just right. because it's yeah. not being put on the record and right. an Instagram, like yo click, check my, my stuff. Right. Um, so I think there's a misappropriation of like who we are as people just in general too. Right. Um, but from within is like, I've seen, you know, I've seen the same expressions in different mediums from you. Mm -hmm. So from music, from challenging, like, yo, I want to do a video, but mm -hmm. I don't want to do it like them. I want to, mm -hmm. can we try this? Can we right. do this? Where right. can we go? Uh, Cause we got stories, and we got stories, <laughs> um, yeah. and and then the food. It wasn't like, hey, I'm gonna open a restaurant, and then and then that's it. It's like mm -hmm. I've seen you go take 
losses that mm. were needed from right. from what you've said to me, right. and uh, and learn from it. Right. And but where we are right now, and I say we because I consider us yep. a part of each other's journey. Absolutely. Um, it's it's I gotta say, man, it's I'm I'm very proud right. and inspired by not you just getting there, but how you got there, mm. and how you are sustaining. Wow. So we gotta give you that. Oh, thank you. Know you what I mean. Thank you. Um, so music to food. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's so much I can say about my journey in music. Um, you know, that influenced my entire being, you know, um, everything was music, you know, uh, everything, you know, I mean, you know, um, so I was always dabbling in food because it was necessity, um, for me. Um, at about 15, because I was doing all this research, I'm like, you know what? I need to become a vegetarian. Mm. And I come from a house that was just straight Southern, pig feet. You yeah, know, like, all, yeah. That, yeah. all that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, wake up, I wake up Sunday morning and I just want to throw up because my father's <laughs> you cooking. You were a vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, my father's cooking pig feet. Yeah. Even when I wasn't, you know what I mean? Um, I just <laughs> never liked that smell, yeah. you know what I mean? But um, so when I told my parents, like, yo, I'm, you know, I'm changing my diet. It was like, I don't, I don't know what that is. <coughs> you know, what you trying to do but we don't cook that here so you're on your own and mm -hmm. I think that began my dabble into mm -hmm. trying to you know sustain myself and through that you know you know it was it was it was vegetarianism so it was you know a lot of plants a lot of fruits and how to deal with those things um and recognize those things um, and so that began an even deeper journey into just what food is and then you know Six, seven, eight, nine, ten years down the line, I got a job at Whole Foods. And I became, I was on the fast track to management. I don't, I don't you know, I skipped a whole bunch there. I don't want, you know, there's a, there's a lot yeah, in between. There's a lot. <laughs> but um, I was on this fast track to management and they put me in the seafood department as um, as a manager in the in the making or whatever. I fucking killed that shit. Um, became a manager and I opened up like five Whole Foods. Mm. Um, I was in Union Square. I was, you know, Long Island. Um, I did Fairfield. I, I opened Milford. Uh, I trained that entire staff. Um, yeah. And that that's crazy because yeah. I remember when Whole Foods. All of, you know, we didn't know what it was, yeah. and all of a sudden now we do. Yeah. Milford, Fairfield. Like, yeah. Wow. So I opened those stores. Wow. Okay. Um, wow. Like as as management, and was an integral part of just like what the ground work was to make that successful. Yeah. I didn't know that I would be able to use that knowledge in opening restaurants. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. know I was, you know, going that route. I didn't yeah. know that was in my future. So, um, you know, fin being financially, uh, fiscally responsible was something that was like, that was like the number one mantra, yeah. you know, uh, working in that business is like, we need to make margin. We need to make money. We need to figure out how to do that every single month. So mm -hmm. that became... A very big part of my DNA. I was top 10 in the, in the region for many years uh, just because I was just dialed in and good yeah. at what I did. Um, and I took that same knowledge into, you know, just like, okay, I really love food. I like, I like this, this, this backdrop, you know, like this, you know, ordering all this food and, and watching it go through the door and watching people actually have an experience with it. Yeah. Like it's, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas. And you, you see like, how how important um, quality is or just having a certain product or just looking for a product is to certain families and certain people. I don't know why, but it just it intrigued me. Yeah. Um, I just started cooking more and more. So you got 15 years old when I was dabbling into what is food for me. And then, you know, as a professional, I'm seeing it on a, a grander scale. And then it all just kind of clicked for me. You know what I mean? Like, um, I really love food. I love how it, you know, informs people. I love how it informs society. Mm -hmm. um, I just started cooking more. And then I started getting into like techniques of smoking uh, meats. So I started smoking briskets. Yeah. Uh, I, I was like, you know what? I had been working at Whole Foods for like seven years at that point. And I was like, you know what? I just, I feel like I reached my, my ceiling. I need to try something else. So I went to a different market. The market folded in like less than a year. So oh. I was jobless. So I was like, you know what? 
got all this knowledge in my head, you know what I mean, about food and and how it informs the world. Let me just try something. And that was that was it. I started delivering brisket sandwiches <laughs> to Fairfield County. Yeah. Meet this person, that person. Hey, Dame, I know this person at Richard Gere's restaurant. I think you should go because this brisket is fire. Okay, I go to Richard Gere's restaurant and I become like the fry the fry cook. And then I meet, you know, my you know, my executive chef at the time, Ben, who just informs me, like, just throws his whole self into me. For, I don't know why. Yeah. But he did. Shout out to him. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Bruckenthal, my brother. Thank you. Um, and he just took me under his wing and was just like, you know, this is how you, this is this technique. This is this technique. This is, this is how you do this. It's like, and I just became a sponge mm. in a very high volume, uh, restaurant. Um, it's Richard Gears. It's in the Bedford Post Inn. There's 340 seats. Wow. It's very, very busy. Wow. Yeah. There's like, I don't know, 19 cooks in the kitchen, mm -hmm. two pastry chefs, two floors, two restaurants on the, on, you know, it's a lot, it's, you know? So I was just wow. like. Yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, you from here, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, you know, uh, um, wine cellar that had like thousands of bottles of wine. And then that became a whole thing, you know, and how that relates to food. And mm -hmm. so that journey began, um, very quickly and, 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 uh, aggressively for me. And then I just never turned back. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're witness to that. Yeah. <laughs> no I was going to ask you if you were classically trained. Would no. you consider you weren't? No. So, no. okay. No, I, wasn't. I didn't go to school. Um, I learned in the fire. Yeah. You know, and, and then, but, you know, yeah, that's um, the best way, I think. Yeah. You, know? you know, after that, even, you know, we, we I left Richard Gere's restaurant and I went to another restaurant in Bedford that folded as well. Then I, you know, I, um, I didn't want to stop cooking because I loved how it felt. And mm -hmm. I just got with a temp agency and I was just like all over the the East Coast, just figuring it out. Yeah. Um, that informed me once again, because now you're in different restaurants under different chefs who have different techniques and different views. And mm -hmm. I just absorbed it all. Okay. Um, and I, I stayed silent. I didn't talk much. I was just like. Watch and learn. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. This shit is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, from my little bit of experience, yeah. I know it's such, it's its own world. Um, and you can, if you don't love it, you won't last. It's pain, period. Yeah. It, it's, it's literally, um, it's, it's so like, um, like you, you could have somebody who just passed away in your family, mm -hmm. and, but you also have somebody who has a 17th, birthday at the restaurant and they are expecting that that uh experience to be the best it can be right yeah. meanwhile you're probably not present in the kitchen because your mind is drifting about the pain you're dealing with mm -hmm. um it doesn't matter yeah you have to push that shit aside and you have to perform at 100 percent every single day otherwise it means it could mean your business yeah every single dish you know, every, every, single every dish, every interaction, mm -hmm. every plate, every every uh, gesture on on the plate has to be at its highest level. Because if not, why are we here? Yeah, and I find it so. Um, so when you, you know when you have a, a, such a creative passion, mm -hmm. but the business is, I, I mean, you can't exist without business. Right, cooking as a hobby is one thing. Right. You know, doing music as a hobby is one thing, and, mm -hmm. and, and I can go down the list. But to marry those two, deal with the pains that come with just, mm -hmm. again, being fiscally responsible. Mm -hmm. And the, like, not only are you responsible for taking some money home, but mm -hmm. once you choose to employ people and put them to those pains, mm -hmm. now you're responsible. It's a family. Right. Yeah. It's a family. Like, right. There's no way around. There's like right. going to boot camp and right. then off to war with your buddies. Mm -hmm. um, so... So that that part I I, I kind of know and gather that it's mm -hmm. like it's such a it's a lot of sacrifice, um, and the sweat tears behind that kitchen door when you come out that door, it's a smile. How's the food? How's right. the food? Right. I'm so glad. Thank you for being here. Right. I was like, and it's, that's not niceties. Right. That's literally like, if there's something wrong, I need to know. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Just even micro expressions, even right. like, yeah, it's fine. Like, you know, right. those things matter because I know how you are with music. Yep. And I know that even though the, traje the, tra the trajectory, but the frequency change, right. 
I know how you are about your music and right. anything you create that you put time in, I know how you are about it. So, man, and, and you know, man, there's so many chefs and so many people that have these businesses that have to go through the pain just mm -hmm. to provide someone with a smile. Right. Yes. And, yeah. you know, the customer could be relentless. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I, I've been very uh, blessed and grateful and I feel, um, feel very uh, favored um, that, our experience has been, has been our experience, you know, you know, nominated and won last year, best new restaurant for the Crazies Awards, Connecticut Restaurant Association, uh, nominated again two years in a row. Yeah. For, and you won last year. The restaurant won last, won last year. year. And yeah. then you nominated as Chef of the Year. Chef of the Year. Yeah. For Connecticut. Which, by the way, we're still voting, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Um, You're watching this. <laughs> Let's yeah. get those we won't do one thing here. today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's, that's a, you know, when you, when you think about, you know, not being trained and having this very, um, un, unconventional, uh, um, segue to this culture of food to be nominated amongst some extremely, when I say extremely, I say extremely talented chefs. It's, yes. it's, it's mind blowing. It really is, man. Um, I don't take it lightly. Yeah. I'm, I'm very humbled by it. That I, I love that because. You know, I always, you know, when we do the film festivals, yeah. um, you know, you get placed in different places and um, like being the most advanced in a certain group doesn't feel as good as being like with some actual competition of like, wow, they, I feel like you putting me in right. that group. Right, uh, right. Um, right. I, I don't feel like, right. you know, some people might want the easy, mm -hmm. right. you know, uh, handicap and like, yeah, I'm definitely going to take this. Like, if you can say that, it's like, maybe I want to go to the next level, right? So like, you know, I think this is the first time any Bridgeport business won. Yeah, Last yeah, year with yeah. The it's yeah. the first time uh, That's cool. of yeah. a nomination. Yeah. It's the first time of a win. And it's also the first time a black chef, in a, you know, has been recognized at, at this level. Um, yeah. Um, or a restaurant has been recognized at this level, at least in the city of Bridgeport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hope that that, you know, inspires other people. It's, it's not, you know, it's not, that's not like, um, yo, look at me, yeah, you know, yeah. look at me, you know, that's like. It can be done. It can be done. Mm -hmm. And I, and forget, forget the people who are probably my age, because, you know, at the end of the day, to keep it real, a lot of people hate for whatever reasons. Yeah. But there's other people looking, there's younger people that are looking, yeah. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, who, who probably didn't think that this was cool you know, um, to be a chef or to have your own business or to go through the pains of creating something that is, you know, probably not popular, you know, and then there's rewards to actually yeah. doing it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one of those consistent things. With it, yeah. You know? So it's one of those things that it, I mean, it, it kind of has been not oversaturated because I think, you know, everybody deserves a shot of trying their passion. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are turned off by hard work and knowing that it's coming. Right? Yeah. So that's the part that's like, yeah, but the rewards are like, you have to experience it. The rewards can be forever. Yeah. yeah. If you know, yeah. if you, if you're, if you're mad enough, if you're insane enough, if you're, <laughs> and that's if you're, exactly. you know, if you're, can, if, if you're passionate enough, it yeah. can be forever, yeah. you know? So it's worth it. You know, mm -hmm. like, you can live forever when you, you can have true legacy, right? If mm -hmm. you, right. because you know, the way you put it is like you are giving people a piece of love. I mm -hmm. mean, it's not just eating and digesting for the fun of it. Right. It's like from from ingredients, right? Uh, like the way you source, which we'll get into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, just again, it's like you did music. Like, yep. Let's find something different and organic right. Right. that doesn't feel overused and that doesn't feel that doesn't get rejected by you know with the mm -hmm. listener or right. your body or the eater, right? So, yeah, all this stuff really resonates, um, and man, it's it's so great to see, um, and it's great to know <laughs> you to this degree that we right. can have you here to talk right. about it. Because again, right. it can inspire people to um, kind of like, yeah, this is a different way that I can, yeah. you know, get away from this trendy. Right. There's only two, three ways to make things happen. To right. man, because I love cooking. Yeah. I mean, the, just and I don't have to open a restaurant to feel mm -hmm. rewarded, right? right but yeah. right. and that's a whole different level of commitment. But and then this was during the pandemic that I even tried to like play a little mm -hmm. bit and create stuff mm -hmm. from scratch and stuff like that. So like yeah. just a little bit of experience feels like you you're creating. So I can imagine just having hundreds of people mm -hmm. 
if not thousands already yeah. in the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Talk and talk about the experience. Yo, you gotta go to Marco, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's it's it, it has been overwhelming, um, honestly. And you have you constantly have to rise to the occasion every single week because it, it it's ever changing. You know what I mean? Um you might have a experience which is I'm thankful there's seldom that we have a experience that is just like, what the fuck was that? You know what I yeah. mean? That was horrible. Yeah. Um, but when we have those, it's ve it's a very serious conversation throughout the entire restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's you know one table, one person has a situation where it's it's you know not to our standard. It's it's serious. Yeah. You know we take it extremely serious. It's yeah. not like who the fuck they think they are. No, yeah, it's no. it's like you came here to support me and to listen to my art or to eat my art or yeah. whatever, and right. you were turned off by it. Right. I need to know why. Yes. You want to know? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. You know? I noticed the last time we the menu changed, mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a lot of African influence mm -hmm. on the menu. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Um, so it exists. There's a lot going on inside of uh, you know my approach to food. It, it you know there's there's a lot of uh, Latin America. There's a lot mm -hmm. of Africa. There's a lot of the South. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, uh, this America, you right. know, a good burger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've always wanted to introduce um, the, the roots of, of me um, and how that has influenced the entire world. Um, no matter where you are, yeah. right. uh, Africa has influenced everything. Right. Absolutely. And especially food. Yeah. Yes. So um, you can't you can't create real food without visiting Africa. some level of Africa. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to pay homage to that idea. Um, um, you know, whether it's stewing meats or smoking or fermentation or, um, there's so many, you know, spices. Yeah. I mean, there's so many ways that the harmonic uses yeah, spices. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> um, there's a joke in there. You guys yeah. get it. Um, um, and and it's something as simple as plantains, fried sweet right, plantains, yeah, right. or even collard greens. Yeah, yeah, I'm and Colombian, collars, right? Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, this is Colombian food. Mm -hmm. And then I came to America and said, like, okay, that's Caribbean food. No, yeah. that's African right. as it gets. Right. Right. And uh, yeah. I went to shout out to Jimmy O. Uh, uh, his um, you know, I went to visit his mom when I first met her, and uh, she had some food there, Nigerian, mm -hmm. and and I saw the plantains. Wow, this yeah. is home. Holy, yeah. like the feeling you get when. Right, because I was like for like two seconds I was did she look at what I eat or something? Right. <laughs> but it's such a it, it's all has an influence. Yeah. Like when you think of like Cuba, Puerto Rico, Peru, yeah, all those all those all those ancestors were very dark. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And that that was you know that slave trade situation. Yeah. So yeah, um, America has been influenced. The Caribbean has been influenced. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, no matter where you are. Yeah. So you you have to visit it and. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I like dealing with the roots of things and the beginning of things. So I always try to do things just like right now. We have a mole uh, on the menu with mm -hmm. our with our snapper. It is very traditional. Um, you know, we 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 had a woman who was Mexican from the city where mole was made, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she had the mole, and she was like, like, <laughs> what the? F this yeah. feels like home. This is that home. Feeling. You know, and so that's a good feeling. So I think right. that's the difference between, you know, just like cooking to make people happy or to try to make a buck mm -hmm. or if you're sincere, right. you know, and most of the times when you're sincere, it kind of comes through that you care about what yeah. you're doing. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's why we may be, uh, you know, hitting the strides the way we are is because we actually care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every single cook in that yeah. kitchen cares. And that's yeah. evident. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. evident. Yeah. I have a cousin that was in Bon Appetit magazine named mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, um, shout out to Danielle and, and her man, Pablo. Um, my girlfriend and I went to Kentucky and he made cream of she crab soup, mm. uh, duck confit, mm -hmm. and I can't remember what else. And, and my cousin is a, is a, uh, like a pastry dessert chef, mm, mm. but she also makes drinks. And mm. she made a drink with mezcal and lavender that was off the hook. Mm. 
And my girl, uh, they put caviar in the she crab. Mm. So she tasted it and was like, wow, yo, I never, her taste buds were lit up. Yeah, and then yeah. she, and then she yeah. ate the duck comfy. And now she's like, wherever they got duck, she wants to try it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they also, they do like a, 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 a catering. Mm -hmm. And they also do, uh, what they used to do when they were in New York, they're in LA now, they used to do uh, dinners at their house. Mm -hmm with celebrities like from mm -hmm. the Food Network and all familiar. that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, it, I, I have never been to one, mm. but Pablo's approach to food when I watched him in the kitchen, it was like, it was like a symphony, mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. he did his thing, yeah. you know? I get it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, literally like, you know, people don't, you know, you might know, you might feel it, yeah. um, but because my my creative source is music, everything that I do in that restaurant is informed by music. Mm -hmm. How I approach a plate with balance um, is the same way I would approach a song. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're mixing a record, it needs to be a certain level of harmony. Mm -hmm. It's the same way I approach how you walk into the restaurant yeah. and how you should feel. Um, so I, it needs to be a song from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just my, how I approach food now. Yeah. Um, the playlist exists for a very, very specific reason. Mm -hmm. uh, the songs that are on that, it's like me, I don't know, maybe like 900 records on there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's records on there that are not English. You know, it's, it's, um, it's from Brazil or mm -hmm. it's um, from Spain. Um, that's because there's influence it on the menu from those places. Um, and I need you to feel the essence of yeah. what we're doing. It's a vibration. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Energy yeah. Thing. Some it's, energy. it's energy. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, we play Fela Kuti a lot, you know, Fela mm -hmm. Kuti was a mm -hmm. revolutionary. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times what we're doing is very revolutionary mm -hmm. um, because it hasn't existed yet in the city um, or in the state in terms of how this black chef approaches dining, okay? right. which is upscale. It's yeah. not. It's not fried shrimp. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, wings. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's there's a, a place thought. for everything, but Correct. absolutely. When, when, you, yeah. when absolutely. you have the gall to step out of the mold, <laughs> yeah. you know, you and you know what? Risk is always a, a factor, right. Right. and failing is expected in right. multiple levels. But, right. But the reward is like once right. I figure this out. Right. It's part of me. It's a right. creation. It's right. my yeah. baby, and it, and you and we treat it as such. And you can't wait to share it with people. Right. And that's the beautiful part about that. It's yeah. it's not something that you can enjoy by yourself. It would be pointless. Yeah. You know what? It's so crazy that you said that because it, it, failure informed my consistency. Mm. You know, when we when I opened, I was like, man, this shit is too different. I'm in Bridgeport. These people don't really got, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's not the it's not the spending community. You know what I'm yeah, saying? The market it's, trends are right. It's not there. Yeah. You know? So my my price point is scary, but I had to say like this is also the level of work I'm putting into it. Right. Like mm -hmm. I have to price it though at the level of work that I'm putting yeah. in. You know what I mean? So it's it's very uh, I don't know. It's 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 wild to see it. You know, people yeah. fill the room from week to week, day to day. No. Yeah. Um, when a lot of this was informed by fear of failure. Yeah, but that's that's a great way to put it. <clears throat> yeah. Because um, in the long run, by you know making sure that your efforts are mm -hmm. taken care of, it's not just for you, it's so you can be consistent right. and be there for more people to enjoy it, right? Because we all look forward to things getting better. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we're all striving to earn more. Mm -hmm do more right mm -hmm. so at some point hey, maybe i can't afford it this year mm -hmm. i'm gonna get that job i'm gonna do what i need to right, do right and when i when i when i when i come back down from that big long year of of, of hustling and mm -hmm. struggle and i'm like i can take my mom to a, what is a nice place i could i've been dying to go there yeah it happens a lot and that is a gift right. you know mm -hmm. so and that's with other things too. Right. Like you know, let me. I need to survive so others can enjoy. It. I can't damper my my gift so that you can enjoy it. 
right. and then no one else gets a chance. So like that's how I see the approach right. to make sure that it's sustainable. Right. Back to fiscal right. responsibility, right. it is a business. Right. It is mm -hmm. a business, and people depend on you. you yeah. Know? Right. Absolutely. I, I always I always tell myself I can't sit in all these seats. Yeah. So it's not it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Even though a big 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 portion of it is, mm -hmm. but I can't I can't fill every single me personally. With my you, one body. You also have to be an ultimate perfectionist. Right. I know you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A chef, being a chef, you have to be a perfectionist. To some degree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, uh, it, it's so funny that, you know, I actually approach our technique in the kitchen uh, mm -hmm. as um, um, ugly, delicious. You know, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 got, I got that from actually, um, uh, uh, from David Chang Keep rolling guys. Yeah. Um, and it just stuck with me that it doesn't have to be extremely beautiful on the plate it, it mm -hmm. should be presentable right but it absolutely has to be delicious yeah yeah because no. there's some yeah. ugly dishes that yeah. are just fantastic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they approach food and, they, you know, everybody has their tweezers and it's mm -hmm. just like so perfect. And then you eat it, it's, it's no salt. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you all this effort and all you right. had to do was just put a little bit more salt. A little salt yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. And That's, that probably would have changed the experience. And would have made a huge yeah. difference. You know That's, what I'm saying? So, yeah. it doesn't matter. It needs to taste beautiful. Right. Yes. You know, and that's that's how, pretty much how we approach it. It needs to be layered. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to be layered from the bottom to the top, and it needs yeah. to have character. and And there's a way. To, there's techniques to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what you, as a chef, that's what you aspire to be um, very good at. Is right. really just building layers. And a lot of people not, are not going to even understand what I'm saying, but. Um, it's almost like having a good bourbon or having a good wine. Mm -hmm. There's Character and textures, yeah. um, you know, there's dryness, there's wet notes, there's right. chocolates, and there's and, it's, and you get all these things at certain times during, mm -hmm. you know, the process of drinking it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the same thing with food. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we like we like our spices to hit at the very end. Mm -hmm. There's a way that to make that happen. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the time <laughs> delay. <laughs> yeah, there's a time delay. The cigars are the same way. Yeah, exactly. Um, like a lot of people, I smoke cigars. A lot of people ask me why I don't like flavored cigars. I like to taste the cigar. I don't want right. to taste vanilla in my cigar, unless it's coming from the tobacco. Right. But other than that, yeah. do you, I mean, but no, it, I don't it, want flavored it, stuff. It takes, you know, indulging in it and actually being passionate about yeah. it, you know, to, to care and, enough. And, and studying. To mm -hmm. not be like, yeah, it's all the same, you yeah. know, because you have to dial in to see the small differences. I wish I knew how to layer flavors in my food. I, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's so it's so funny that they, it, it is a science. There's yeah. a science to it, and there's yeah. there's infinities affinities between uh, ingredients and and tones, and some things work together. Yeah. Um, like for instance, sweet potato and, and oranges. Yeah. It, it, it works together because of the affinity of it. You know, people wouldn't understand that that if you put orange zest on a cooked sweet potato, it's going to make it delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I got to try that. Yeah. I got some sweet potatoes in there. Right. But it's definitely science. Yeah, it's, it's science. science. Yeah. You know I mean, you have to study the science right. to understand yeah. right. uh, those kind of things. And you have to study in order to be a chef. You right. know? A lot of people consider themselves chefs. but and, and studying doesn't necessarily mean school. No. It just means, no. like you said, become a sponge. Mm -hmm. You know, don't wait forever to take that risk, no. but learn until you feel confident that you understand what you're doing and and the purpose that comes with again mm -hmm. feeding people, bringing smiles to people's faces, mm -hmm. uh, and you know making yourself proud, your family proud, your partners proud. Mm -hmm. um, and man, it's, it's it's such a it's such a uh, breath of fresh air, mm -hmm. right? But there's so much work. I always emphasize there's so much work behind it that you have to appreciate it. So we're going to take a small break yeah. to thank our beautiful sponsors. Uh, and then we're going to come back and talk back about some music, some travels, and mm -hmm. some, some funny experiences we've had. <laughs> All Michelle. right. This episode is sponsored by Soul Food Sundays, the home of the creatives. Mobile registration services of Connecticut. 
located at 40 Fairfield Avenue, right downtown Bridgeport. Exhibit B Agency, designing bold futures for bold brands. Visuals and sounds, audiovisual solutions for businesses and events. And we're back. We are with Chef Damon Day today. Uh, we're talking about all things food, art, inspiration, growth, learning. Uh, long before, you know, Marco, 29 mm -hmm. Marco, mm -hmm. uh, right in downtown Bridgeport. Um, we, you know, we, we got a chance to to create together for, for like, I think seven, eight different videos, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So like one of the, the uh, you know, life-changing moments because I was going already through some life-changing mm -hmm. stuff. Um, you know, I was um, I was one interview away from getting my green card. Mm -hmm. And then it, the process was going to take like another two years. And uh, we already had done like four or five videos and mm -hmm. like, we, we got to go to Jamaica. Now, when you're uh, not documented, you don't really tell everybody mm -hmm. until it's necessary. Mm -hmm. I was, um, you know, I, I was like, damn, man, like I can leave, but I can't come back. <laughs> So, Trinidad, um, Trinidad. Yeah, but at first you okay. said Jamaica. It was Jamaica. You wanted to go to Jamaica. Yeah, it was Jamaica. First. I was like, I can leave, but I can't come back. Um, and and it was, he was like, damn, damn, damn. It's like, we, like the song and and and, yeah. and not, but a week later, I got my green card in the mail. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have to go to one last thing. And the mm -hmm. first thing I did was like, yo, damn, we can do it now. He's like, all right, we're gonna switch it up. Though. We're gonna go to Trinidad, and that was quite the experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was uh, yeah. my first time out of the country since yeah. I got legal. Did you yeah. like you like Trinidad? I love Trinidad. Did you have we, some, we spent some, some really bacon time shark on the beach? We did oh, the shark. Yeah. We ate shark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the beach, some sauce. Yeah, man, that was uh, that was life changing, man. Yeah, that was yeah. a great experience, man. Yeah. It was a song. It was a, a cover, Emily King, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we, I mean, we we got the kids playing soccer. I mean, there was everything that I envisioned being able to grab, you know, get. Um, and at the time, I don't think anybody was really getting films outside of the yeah. county at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, we did Vegas too. Yep. That was yeah, a Vegas. fun experience too. Shout out to Jupe. Yeah. Um, but um, the 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 food. And all the, you know, because, you know, you grew up here, like everything, Jamaican food, and then right. you don't really hear much about the other cuisines in the Caribbean. Right. And right. I know your, your good friend, best friend, mm. really, his mom was there mm. cooking for mm. us. Yeah. And um, it, it was such a great experience. Uh, you know, I mean, we, it was, like, that's when we kind of like. Yeah, bro, I love Rhodes. Man, dope, dope. Um, Vegas and, uh, and Vegas was special because I think we, we flew, flew in like at 5 a.m. and. Mm. I was like, I know where to shoot. We're going to go all the way to uh, Red Rock before the sun comes up. Mm -hmm. And the the sun was like, oh, man, th this is like my music video, like like yeah. two, three a week mm -hmm. <laughs> before babies mm -hmm. and, and marriage and stuff. But um, but, but I always well, keep those moments very close to me because they were they were life changing and, and it was a beautiful time. Man. Same, bro. Same. Yeah. Um, just, you know, how we approached all those situations, especially like um, move that body. Oh, man. I mean, that was just like, what the fuck are we doing? And that was one of those moments where he was like, wait, wait it, it is, <laughs> you see it, but we had to shoot it to really see what he really meant. But you take those like, because we already knew how he was, he was always challenging, like mm -hmm. meaning challenge me and, and everybody involved to do more. So we had this young lady in a very beautiful, tasteful way, mm -hmm. um, just painted white with the, Native American feathers, mm -hmm. and she just moved like the mm -hmm. wind. It mm -hmm. was, yeah. man, it was crazy. But that man. sounded like a house music track. It kind of it was, though. It was, it was, it was. <laughs> it was, move that yeah. body. Yeah, it was. Man. I mean, because, you know, honestly, back in the day, we, we came up on that, man. Yeah. There was a lot of house music, you know, house, a lot of house parties. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We came up on that, man, like. We was dancing back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah nobody was hugging yeah. the wall. Yeah, Yo, yeah. now we was dancing, you go, bro. You go to parties now, and the, the kids are standing around bobbing their head and rapping at each other. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. The girls was twerking, but the dudes are standing around looking yeah, at nah. each other. Nah, we was in the, we was in the corner grinding, yeah, man. That's we, it, grinding it out. Yeah, we was grinding. Yeah, man. Sure. We had a chick. We was in the corner, and man. If you, dancing if, our if ass you was off. at a Trinity party, you was going yeah. whether you was on the wall or not. You was gonna get grinded out. Yeah, <laughs> didn't matter. Yeah, man. So, so m m music and, and and food, right? That's mm -hmm. like the the your, your world. Absolutely. You know, and they go hand in hand. Absolutely. So one thing. Uh, 
when and and when you you brought you brought up catering so yeah. and i also you know was yeah. part of uh, when you did yeah. the our yeah. table dinners right yeah. uh which was another set of experience that you know uh we actually got to meet juice world maybe a year before yeah. he passed i think it was like not even a year i think it was probably like five months yeah we were on well you know the 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 we well, yeah we were all honoring his manager digital right. prince yeah yeah uh from interscope and uh yeah it, it was you know in the hills in mm -hmm. la like mm -hmm. on some movie <laughs> yeah. uh but it was the kitchen was bah, 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 yeah. bah. i mean yeah. um lower east side yeah. i mean the lower yeah. manhattan yeah. um but it was always like so every time we get together, it's like elevation, yeah. mm -hmm. elevation. You know what right. I mean. So that right. that's always been dope, man. Right. And you always walk away with like a, a feeling of like, okay, the world's bigger, yeah. and there's so much more out there right. to get. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not like a sense of non belonging. It's a sense of like we got work to do. Yeah. We got work to do. Yeah. When you see stuff like that, of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we got some yeah, work yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to take those situations, man, and be like, like you know. This could be like the climax. Yeah. Like, wow. Or what the fuck else can we do? Yeah. You know, yeah. if we if we made it here, what what the fuck else can we do? Yeah. And that that's something else was just like, all right, so I'm gonna go to Philly and open a restaurant. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. How that that was one of your you had to go through that to get oh, here yeah, more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. So yeah, so uh, so as we just talked about, I had a company called um, Our Table Dinners. It was focused on uh, catering uh, mixed with some philanthropy um, and combining those ideas with um, with with the entertainment business. So be it artists, um, you know, label heads. Uh, <clears throat> you know, platinum producers or whoever they might be, mm -hmm. um, who we felt deserved some level of recognition, we we opted to do a dinner for them, and those dinners were typically filled with a lot of A list um, personalities. A, a, a list, mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> triple A. Yeah, for real. Like, uh, <laughs> That's um, and so, uh, at you know, at the time, our our company was comprised of. Uh, Couple of individuals, uh, Scott Lee, shout out to Scott, shout out to Scott you know, Lee. my partner. Uh, but Nikisha Bailey was also uh, um, part of our team, and she was on the Grammy board. But she was moving to Philly, um, and she asked me, like, I have family in Philly. My family's from Philly. She's like, mm -hmm. Yo, damn, I'm thinking about a restaurant. Like, it just makes sense mm -hmm. for us to do it. And I gave it months of thought. You know, like, I, I don't know, like, I would have to leave my family. <laughs> well, you're originally from Philly, right? Well, no, I'm from from I'm from Connecticut. Okay, but my my family's from Philly. I okay, spent nice. a lot of time in Philly. Okay, um, so it was like Philly. Yeah, yeah. My whole childhood was Philly, yeah. Connecticut. Philly, Connecticut. Yeah. Every weekend I was in Philly, for the most part. But you're a Nick fan, though. <laughs> yeah, oh, that fan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I I I definitely fuck with my Philly. I'm not my Philly I'm not teams. mad at you. Yeah, but you know, as, as today's fit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't follow sports. Yeah. Um. So the show love Raiders. No. Yeah. So <laughs> Nikisha had an idea to open a restaurant. I was I was absolutely with it because we had been so successful with the dinners, at our table, and um, we did it. Um, it was absolutely successful. There were some barriers that um could not be completely satisfied and. You know, fortunately and unfortunately, I had to you know move away from that project. But by no means was it was it uh, unnecessary. Um, and I I look at that time as completely positive because it informed me of wow, like one the threshold of stress, like what your body can actually take and what mm -hmm. your mind can actually process mm -hmm. under those very dire times is greater than we can imagine. Mm -hmm. And um, there's another level after it, you know, like you got to push through that to get to the next part of this shit. Mm. The next part of it for me was 29 Markle, you know, like I could either took that experience and be like, I would never do this shit again. Right. Right. Because it's too fucking much mm -hmm. or damn, I could have did this a little better. 
Right. <laughs> Taking it. Yeah, all. right. Yeah, <laughs> or if I just did experience. this. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. if I just did that, yeah. the, the, I think the fear yeah. is just take what you learn and tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think one of the things with fear is like you know, of failure is that you're only gonna be left with failure. Right. When mm -hmm. you're gonna leave with two different things. So here's a here's a thing that also informs me is you know spirituality and and um you know um uh the Bible says all things are for the good of you, no matter what it is. That's hard to fathom, you know what I'm saying? You get a death in the family, how can you say? Mm -hmm. That's for the good of me, you know? But all things shape you. Mm -hmm. So they have to be for the good of you. So right. no matter what you go through, it's going to shape you. It's forging. Mm -hmm. It's forging. Right. forging. Yeah. It's no matter what it is. Yeah. yeah. So it has to, just the universe, the, the natural order of it is it, for the good of you. Mm -hmm. Because either you're going to learn something about yourself. Right. Um, you're gonna grow through or go through some things that you didn't think you were capable of doing. Yeah, that's gonna inform you. That's gonna you know give you some knowledge about life. And so all things are for the good of you. Yeah. Right. Um, and once you understand that and you live with that, then it doesn't matter, you know, what stress level, because at the end of the day, you're operating at a level that a lot of people probably can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's up to you to decide. You know, yeah. if this is you know, um. I can't take this anymore. Damn, this is this is kind of okay. What do I do next? Yeah, you know, this is fucking stressful. But I see this window. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. You may cut yeah, yourself yeah, up a little bit. Yeah, yeah it is what ladder, it is. Yeah. But, yeah. but okay, what can I do next? Right. So, um, I mean, that, that it sounds easy. Easy, right? right? It does sound easy. Or that right. it sounds. Oh, so you put it together things that most people have to put on their own. Right. And and then get, they got to put it together from another set of pieces of a puzzle, right? Right. Uh, but I think what you can take from that, right? Because everybody's like, oh, yeah, you say that because you're the good place. No. Like, mm -hmm. It's more like, um, no, it's learn to recognize, you know, obviously don't put yourself in harm's way, mm -hmm. but recognize the forging moments. Right. That yeah, you're gonna you know get a little scruffed up. You're gonna you know right. bump your knees a little bit. You're gonna fall a couple of times, but uh, don't take only the negative that comes right. from that. Take the positive. This right. oh like there's always some good in everything. Right. And if and you just said something. You said because he's in a good place. If if when, when you're when you're an entrepreneur, you're never in a good place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> ever. And so once you feel you're in a good place as Listen. an entrepreneur, you're done. I'm about to cry. So you're, you're done. done. <laughs> you're done. You just got to be stressed out Listen. all the time. Huh? You're done. Listen, wow. once you choose to to pursue <laughs> one, your one, <laughs> once you feel like yo, I, I'm good as an entrepreneur. Yeah, you're done. I'm done. You're never good. Yeah. It's just not done. You're, it's, 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 you're it's never good. Yeah. Yeah. But it's up but to me it's like I, I wouldn't trade it for Absolutely not. For for, for, you know, for just like, laying down and taking it. Like you know, like <laughs> it's, people have no idea the level of responsibility that it takes to be responsible for other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And their livelihood. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. like it's all you know, of, of course it, you know, it looks good on, you know, social media, you know, the yeah. food and the you know, the awards and all that yeah. stuff, but at the end of the day. And those are good times. Yeah, those are good times. But at the end of the day, there there are real situations yeah. that require attention. Yeah. Um some somebody probably can't pay their rent yeah. this week. Um some probably is going through depression. Mm -hmm. Some prob somebody, you know, you know, had a loss in there, you know, and that affects everything. Right. So how do you deal with that? Yeah. It affects the operation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, it's you know a, what I mean? It'll be a oil machine. Yeah. Right? Something's off. There's going to. So you have to be, off. you have to be, uh, you have to have the bandwidth and the willingness and the resources to fix situations yeah. that are not, are not typically normal that you would have to deal with. Yeah. You know, you deal with your own shit. Yeah. But having to deal with your shit and everybody else's shit <laughs> and continue to, Thrive and be successful is is and extremely it to keep happening. Right, it's extremely um. I don't, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, you gotta have. I mean, you said <clears throat> you know you'd be surprised how far you can go, but you do. It's like a muscle that bandwidth. Yeah, you have to, to kind of train that a little bit by learning how to take by things you know by failure. That's the only way. Like exercise, train it. you have to keep. You gotta falling. break a couple fibers yeah. to grow that and muscle. And realize yeah. at the end that. 
it's time to, you know. So every meal yeah. that I've ever produced as a as a as a mainstay on, on any menu I've ever done mm-hmm. was a result of doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. I oversalted something. Mm-hmm. I overcooked something. I sous vide something way too long or at the highest temperature that it should have been something different. I braised something before, you know, I took, you know, it, you know, it's all like, I shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> because now I know right. to do this. But it's like, it's like when you're a child and you try different things. Right. Right. It, it, it's that childlike right. behavior sometimes creates some of the greatest things in the right. world. So it's our, it's our, it's our, it's our best friend. It's failing is our best friend. I heard, a, I heard a, a, um, excuse me. I heard a, a phrase say failing up, hmm. failing upward. That means like embracing that shit and learning from it. Like, like with intention. Yeah. This shit was wrong, but. What's the flip? Yeah. You know? Because now you know what you did wrong. Yeah. So it's no longer a guessing game. Like, yeah. I'm definitely not doing that again, but I know that. It's a blessing. Yeah. And in the kitchen, that's a daily. It's a, it's a daily yeah. conversation amongst me and my, my, my team. And it's, it's like, it's happening all the time. It is 24-7. Mm-hmm. Um, we could have did this better. We don't have to do that anymore. We should do it like this. Mm-hmm. Like, even on dishes that are already on the menu. Mm-hmm. Like we, we, every day we learn like that we got a little bit tighter. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't break that sauce because we did this this time. You know, there might've been an issue with every time, you know, we, we, you know, we put it on, the, you know, on the warmer, you know, because it's busy as fuck and the sauce breaks when it's time for us to deliver that. Mm-hmm. Why is that happening? There's a, there's probably a a, a a fix to that. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a science, and, and you find it. Mm-hmm. Science, and yeah. you find it, and so that now we keep a ton of sauce right there. Yeah. It doesn't break. Yeah, and now we can put out a bunch yeah. more product. Right. Yeah. What but like, and, oh, I just want everybody to know that while you're sitting down with a little bit of music, and you know you got your water, and everybody's mm-hmm. nice needs, and yeah. There is chaos in the kitchen. It, it really is. If there's no chaos in the kitchen, I don't know if I want to be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think everything's yeah. just frozen. But yeah. all jokes aside, um, you know, that's something to consider um, yeah. uh, when you go and you, yeah, we are the customer, yep. you know, because the customer is always right. It's an incomplete. Yeah, yeah. The customer is always right when it comes to taste. Right. Uh, but, you know, you have to be nice to the people that are serving you. You yeah. do have to be human. Yeah. Well, you, you know, they're going out of their way. Yeah. You bring up something that is so valid that I, I almost want to start a campaign. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? There's because, a platform for it, this is it. <laughs> because, you know, even even me, like, you know, we go out to eat and we expect a certain level of whatever mm-hmm. it is, right? But we have no idea from the from the farm to the delivery to the drop off. Mm. We don't know if that delivery was late that day. We don't know if it was supposed to come at 12, but it came at four. Mm-hmm. And service starts at 4.30. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, not, not we, we, can't, we, we can't go out and say, hey guys, we're late. <laughs> our lettuce came at four o'clock. It was supposed yeah. to be here at 11. Yeah. We don't do that. Yeah. So when we say, listen, we don't have salad right now. They look at you like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> How do you not have fucking Caesar salad? Aren't yeah. you a restaurant? Like, yeah, like, yeah, like bro. You, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't see that that line of yeah, the farm to table line, right. especially yes. when you do make the efforts to go. Because you you really like locally, you yeah, go I, places. I, I try, I try my best. You know, yeah. um, there's a lot of you know the volume that we deal with. You know, a lot of places can't. You know, but we we absolutely source responsibly. Yeah. Um, whether it's from our farm locally or from a farm that is, you know, closer, you know, further away, but yeah, you know, technically, but you do what you're yeah, yeah, do. try mm-hmm. stay, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's like you have no idea what it took for this 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 item to get here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's there's droughts, there's all type of shit happening, and mm-hmm. you know, we're about to see 
some bad yeah, effects exactly. coming up with, exactly. with this port closure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, people don't understand. And then now a lot of people are about to get yeah. yelled at that have nothing to do with, with what's this going whole on. Thing. Yeah. Like, I love, oh, yeah. I, I love, I love my patrons. I, I really do. But there's a lot of times it's just like, you, you don't understand. Like, you know, my guy just lost his, his brother. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry if the, the steak that he cooks normally is a little over. Yeah. Yeah. A little over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, when you, yeah. at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It's steak. Eat. I asked for a medium I mean, and this I, is medium. Well, you know, when you are with yeah. family, you, you know, you know, with, with, with wifey right, or, right. or with, with mom. Yeah. You, you, you know, you, you have to represent yourself and hey, my lady. You gotta have some this, decorum. It's not yeah. right. But like me, I really try not to. I never done, I mean, I worked at Dunkin' Donuts. That's yeah. nothing though. That's just right. repetitive. Well, I mean, yeah. But um, I do, like, you gotta be kind. Like, if I don't mm -hmm. like it, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm picky, but yeah. making a stink to me is like, uh, it's unbecoming and then you really don't know. I always be like, man, you don't know what this person. Right. Yeah might be going through even me like i'm super picky as a, as a chef when i go out to eat i'm it's it's, all, it's almost impossible for me to turn off my analytics if i owned the restaurant and you walked in i'll be scared <laughs> <laughs> and, and a good way though because you might be that complimentary be like, okay, yes but so, um yeah because but, it's intimidating I'm yeah, but <laughs> I, I will never send the plate back yeah i wouldn't do that um either. i'm not gonna tell you know if i know the, the, the chef or the restaurant yeah. i might you know send a note or something like that but I just know how it is. And yeah. you don't know the dynamics that created the plate yeah. that came to me. Um, there's a lot that happens in, in, the, in the behind, man. It's, it's and, the, and the pace is so fast. And, you know, <laughs> like, for instance, like, you know, it could be like, you know, if we open up at 4.30, it could be dead for like two hours. Then all of a sudden, seven o'clock comes and a hundred people walk in. <laughs> That's not a joke. Mm -hmm. That happens. It's not, it's not, it's so serious <laughs> when that happens. No, I mean. Like the level of just approach to food at that time yeah. is so fucking intense, bro. They have no idea. Yeah. You go from plateau and then, and it's, and just, then it's, it's expectation yep, to right, you got to deliver. Right. And, yeah. and, and you got to be on point. Yeah. Right. Then you might have a table of two, you might have a table of eight, you might have a table of 10, you might mm -hmm. have a table of four. Everybody's ordering different things because mm -hmm. they want to try and it, and it's a hundred people in the room. The mm -hmm. timing alone, it's the science of timing. Yeah. Um, I mean, and this goes out for the service, you know, yeah. uh, a, a, good, a good waiter service. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if the right terms because, you know, we, we change it, but someone that waits, the people in the front. Right. Um, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's, it's a science, man. Oh, it is. The whole, the whole, the whole service, you know, even the word, you know, service, you know, it's, it's, that's what we call it. We call it service. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in service right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So even that approach is always um, putting us on the, on the back burner because we're in service to someone else. Yeah. But even with that, that idea, you know, it still falls short of what people's expectations of, you know, what's possible, you know, in a restaurant are like, it's not going to be hundred percent all the time. Mm. Like you have to get that out of your mind because we're not robots. Yeah. And we have emotions and we get angry and we get sad mm. and we get, and, and that's why this position is so like, for me, it's so like important because no matter what, I still have to deliver. I have to show up for my team before I show up for myself. Mm -hmm. So it's always service to others, even, even as me as a boss is still in service yeah. to my team, to the staff, to the restaurant, to the community, mm -hmm. even though it's mine. Right. So people don't understand that. And you call yourself a chef, but it's all about service. Mm -hmm. Service. It's not about you, you know, uh, yeah, look at, you know, I'm very thankful for the accolades that I've been able to yeah. get, you know what I'm saying? But they're definitely encouraging. They're, they're, they're encouraging. They're positive confirmations. Affirmations of the, the maybe the line that I'm yeah. trotting, but. The journey you take. The journey. Not this is it, but the journey. Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I know that I'm nothing without my staff. And I know that I'm nothing without the people that come in there constantly. So it's always in service, mm -hmm. yeah, no matter what. And it comes with a price. Yeah. Know? That's a common thing with all the guests I've had so far. Yeah. Um, 
servers in different levels, right? Right. Service to, you know, whether you're in law enforcement or if you're, you know, an educator, um, if you're, you know, it's it's selflessness mm -hmm. right? at the end of the day to be part of a community, ingrain yourself in that community and become a staple and a great representation of our community. Because mm -hmm. uh, Bridgeport needs that. I mm -hmm. mean, we, we, we needed you. We need all, mm -hmm. all the other folks that are doing their best to, you know, not just restaurants, but like businesses, right, right. Um, nonprofit. Mm -hmm. This is for the service of community, the village we always talk about, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I forgot who, I think it was with uh, Charles Grady, redefining community. Like community was something when we were kids. It was the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And now it's the people you have certain things in common with. It's virtual in mm -hmm. a way, right? Mm -hmm. And thanks to social media, mm -hmm. there's also this other layer of associates and people mm -hmm. that you know of, mm -hmm. which 100 years ago, you didn't know that many people. Right. Like, um, what does community mean to you? It means that um, if I'm up, you should be up. Um, if you're down, I'm down. That's it. If if you're not if you're if you if your if your community doesn't support you enough that you can come into my restaurant and have a drink, then we're all failing. Mm -hmm. Like it's a shared fate, right? My success is your success. Um, because if you're not making enough on your job to come dine at my restaurant. <laughs> yeah, you you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. None none of it makes sense yeah. at that point. Mm -hmm. So it, it has to be, um, you know, a selfless type. You know, from the top from the top down, it has to be selfless, reaching always, right? So just yesterday, um, I didn't post this. I'll say it now because we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. But I dropped off. I don't know, cases and cases of food to the breast the the um. Bridgeport Rescue Mission. Um, that's not something I'm, 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 wasn't going to promote. I think our boy Will Will, uh, Will Fulton works there, if I'm not mistaken. Shout out to everybody yeah. who's taking the time to do this. Um, People are in need. So, you know, a case of chicken, you know, cases of mushrooms, fries, um, cabbage. If I'm not doing that, right, then what's happening? to all the people that if, if I'm, if I'm in service all the time, if that's what I'm claiming to be, that's also a part of service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has nothing to do with money. No. Right. You know what I mean? No, it has, it has to do with service. Right. Service. And right. if you talk about business in the market, right. I, I agree so much with that because right. something you said, you know, right. if your community is not allowing you to be able to use me, I'm in service, right? Mm. I have a rate, but you know what comes with it. And sometimes, you know, more a hundred percent, not a hundred percent, 90% of the time we'll go over the time mm -hmm. or we'll do the extra mile. Um, but if the community doesn't sustain enough people to be part of this, then we all fail it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because then I don't have a, a right. sustainable business. Right. You don't get to enjoy this. Right. And we should do better. Right. Mm -hmm. And giving back is Giving back is, I mean, it, that's part of service. Mm -hmm. um, but I always look at it like, I do try to put myself in other people's shoes, no matter how cast out they might be, you know, whatever addictions or, cause there's a lot of mental illness, like homelessness. There's a lot of people that are really apathetic to that. Nah. You get a job, like, nah. don't get me wrong. I see some people standing on the ramps and I'm like, mm. I don't know. Mm. You, you've had 400 years to get it together. Mm. <laughs> right, but for the most part, hey, and it can happen to anybody. Right, a, right. Lot, a lot of Americans are like couple paychecks away from homelessness, right. and that's mm -hmm. not that's crazy. That's scary. That's real crazy. So, not to say that someone that abuses, you know, there's people that continue to abuse the hand that helps them, but mm -hmm. there's people that just they're down. Yeah, and you don't have to see. It's a pay it forward system. Like you're not gonna wait to see who's gonna eat it, but to make sure he eats it, make sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like that's not my business. That's not what I'm here for. So. It's the That's energy. A huge thing. It's the energy of it. Yeah. You know, it's it's um you, you the universe, you can't hide from the universe and you can't hide from from, you know, um just those kind of laws. So if you do something just to say you did it, mm -hmm. 
it's still not going to benefit you. Right. Yeah, no. You know, it cancels you, those, 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 those things don't matter. That's it. Right. It has to be from your heart. Yeah. yeah. You know, it has to be because this is what you, uh, it's in your heart to do. Mm -hmm. Not because y'all, if I do this, I'm going to get this. Mm -hmm. You're done already. Yeah. Let other people tell it though. Right, you exactly, know, because absolutely. And for me, and, and there was a few, and uh, it was actually it's coming around the corner. I was, I filmed, uh, there was a time where Sholi and a number of chefs, local chefs and people, and just people from all backgrounds, uh, and Thanksgiving, they fed a few people under mm. the bridge. Like, and not just like scraps, they made mm. like Thanksgiving dinner. Mm. And I filmed it, that was my service to capture, right? Mm. Um, because it needed to, right? Uh, nobody asked me to. I didn't get paid for it. I definitely got a plate when everybody was done. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I posted it. And then there were like some comments. They were like, well, if you if you should film it, it doesn't count. Mm. And I was like, well, because you could have been like, block. I don't want to mm. hear you. But mm. I was like, hey, I, I, I agree. Mm. Don't film. Don't Especially if somebody's down. You don't, don't right. want to be filmed. Right, right. Say, but I was very respectful. I filmed hands. Mm. feet not mm. faces mm. unless somebody wanted to be on camera mm -hmm. I filmed the people though that were helping mm -hmm. because I, this, did you know that we're doing this a lot of people don't know that you can go to a soup kitchen right now and lend your hand 10 hours 2 hours 40 minutes right mm -hmm. so to me I'm just showing that it can be done and it's right. available um, there's somebody that might need that for their own healing like I need to help I need to be part of something and I had to break it down to the person. They were like, no, 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 no. I didn't get hired to do this. I'm capturing people that I'm admiring. They didn't want to be filmed. They didn't ask me to be there. So sometimes let somebody else tell the story. Mm -hmm. You know what, man? It's, it's on the tip of my tongue and I'm almost like um, <laughs> um, reluctant. But, you know, they see the success of 29 Marco Court. Right. And... The truth is a lot of it is because we actually give a lot. Um, and we don't talk about it, you know? It's just part of our DNA. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's part of why we are the way we are. It's, it's Our mantra is always with love. And so we lead with that and we, we perform in that. And so People are like how do you, you know because the in it, the, the the universe is fucking with us. God is fucking with us because it's natural. This this energy is natural. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like we give not because of the sake of giving, just because that's what's supposed to be done. Yeah, it's, it's, that's just what it should be. In, that's what happens in the world. Yeah, that's what, yeah. how plants and bees it's and cycles. wind and everything yeah. There's no works. Mm -hmm. Everybody is sharing, yeah, sharing this experience, right? And That's so right. if, if you're not sharing your experience um, when you're up, when you're down, whatever, then you're, you're, you're negating yourself from the natural course of abundance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. You're not a part of the community anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Back to community. The, the universal yeah. community. Yeah. You're, you're getting out of, like I said, the order of things. The order of order, things. Yeah. Order is good. When you're in order, yeah. I don't even see it as a reward. Yeah. It's just when things <clears> are in order, and they're aligned, mm -hmm. no one has to mess right. with it. And that mm -hmm. takes a certain kind of heart, takes a certain kind of mind, mm -hmm. takes a certain kind of centeredness, right. a certain awareness of things for that to take place. You know what I'm saying? And so we approach food that way. Mm -hmm. We approach our guests that way. We approach our staff that way. We approach this interview that way. Yeah. Um, and so these are the reasons why we strive. And mm -hmm. it's not just because we got good food or the ambiance is good. It's because the energy allows it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's the secret. It's a secret that, you know, I keep for myself sometimes, <laughs> but I think it's important that people know that they should get their fucking shit right. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, at the end of the day, it's not just food. It's not just a restaurant. Like it's, it's a, it's a way of being. Um, I think all, uh, you know, creative artists, I think at the end of the day, I think they're all selfless, you know, if you're serious about it. Mm -hmm. I think all artists are selfless. And I think that tradition should stand the test of time, no matter what your art is, yeah. you know. Um, so whether it's cooking or whatever, I'm still trying to deliver the best of me yeah. for someone else. There, I can't even tell you how many times all of my cooks 
including myself, seldom eat mm -hmm. with all the food that we produce on a day-to-day -day basis, which is crazy. It's just because we're so dialed into- yeah, You're going 100 miles giving an hour all day. What we're supposed to get. Yeah. Yeah. It's so seldom we be like, guys, hold on, we haven't eaten yet. Mm -hmm. We're delivering all this right. food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's I, you know, I mean, like, yeah, we do, we do family meal. You know, sometimes we forget, you know, because it, you know, schedule just it is what it is, and you know, family meals is a ritual in the kitchen, but it's not every time it's going to be available. You yeah. know, especially when you know you're not expecting 75 people on a on a slow day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you got to get busy. That adrenaline yeah. kicks in, they take yeah. your nose, like, do we eat? Well, that chicken looking mighty good. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's, I think that is the key ingredient to why we continue to excel um, is that we seldom think about ourselves. And that's a lesson to learn. When you, the less you think about yourself, the more you get. Mm -hmm. And not, Abundance, yeah, but you get yeah. what's yours. You know, mm -hmm. we we don't take nothing with us. We, you get what you need to have at the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before we go, do you want to leave the viewer with a message? Whoever's watching this, even if they just started late or if they've been learning and taking notes <laughs> from the beginning. I don't know, man. I'm Chef Damon Day, 29 Marco Court. Um, I'm completely human. Um, I am an imperfect beautiful specimen of God. And um, I think that we all are. And I think that if you are passionate enough about anything that you want to do in this world, hopefully it's a positive thing, that it will be done. Um, and I'm living proof. There you have it. If you need an inspiration today, you found it. How you feel, Michael? I'm feeling good. All right. Good conversation. Tiny Bar Chats, yeah. Edwin Escobar, Michael Moon, Chef Damon Day. We can't thank you enough for your time and your thank words, you. man. Thank you for having me, man. That is service. <laughs> Tiny Bar Chats.